as partners, um, you really need to talk. You know, something I need to learn. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my room. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Chef. I'm super excited to have you here with me. Today we're talking about books. Yes, books. I, on my end, I'm an occasional reader. I am definitely not an avid reader, but I do enjoy the reading culture. You know, I admire friends of mine who, you know, I think in my head, like in my world, I think they were born or they came out of the womb reading books. <laughs> Seriously, I have those friends and I know you probably know of such people or you're maybe you're, you're, you're that type of person. Today's video is for you, so I hope you enjoy and share this video if you do and give me a thumbs up. So I intended to review some books I got from my library KE. Definitely not a sponsored post, but I'd just like to shout them out because the books I got, guys. Have you ever read such emotional books, Hadi? I texted them and I was like, you know what? For my December read, I just want anything that is not emotional. I want a very practical book because I need to pick my heart from the ground. So their page on Instagram is called my, li my library KE. I like them because they have different ranges of books, old books, new books, very rare authors, um, or maybe you'd, you'd say unknown authors. Um, and then the price range, guys, if you're on a budget like you, girl. Man, I could afford to have a book every month from October when I found out about them. So please do check them out. Um, get yourself a book, if you, especially if you do enjoy hard copy books. Like myself, I struggle reading soft copy books so much, guys, even if the book is really good. But yeah, I'm going, I think I'm going to review these two books in this video. I'm going to review a book that I read. I actually thought I read it this year, in January, but apparently I read it in November last year, same time as now. And guys, I took pictures of just like the title of the book as well as the first two first pages of the first two characters if that makes sense because i loved it that's how much i loved it um i'm just looking at my productivity board which you've probably seen and i think i'll pick out i'll pick out this <sighs> guys i read another amazing book which is there I even wrote it down. This is how much I liked the book. 2020 has had good books, I have to say. Um, and it's called The Defining Decade. Actually, I have friends who read it a couple of years ago. And I was like, why did you not tell me about it? So thank you, Betu. Shout out to you for uh, um, having me read the book. I loved it. It's called The Defining Decade. Today's books, guys. Today's books are by the same author. She's called Debbie Makomba. Uh, she's an American author. And I think from the reviews I've read online and the books that I've seen from her library, she's an author who writes so much about friendships and relationships, especially in the women's circle. Guys, this books, this books are my favorite books of the year, guys. And I'm glad I can actually say that. So I read this in October. It's called Thursdays at 8 by Debbie Makoma. It's a novel. And then in November, I really enjoyed it, guys. I really enjoyed it. I had to get this other copy. Um, I think they had just these two novels um, by the same author in stock. So I was like, once I, I even don't think I finished it. So I just texted them and I was like, guys, reserve for me the other book by Debbie Makoma. I didn't even know what book it was. And then I went for it sometime in November. So this was my November read. I loved it. It's called A Good Yarn. And I think I'll just say a little bit. I'll give a short story of the book and maybe read about the characters um, in the book. And then, yeah, so this is how the book looks. So the cover is a removable one so this is it has a red um bind if that makes sense with her name and the name of the book um yeah so it's plain in that sense which i think is very aesthetically pleasing if you do like want to 
use it as like decoration or something and then this is um, has the same type of look white with a blue um, bind on the side and yeah so both books had like they hit close to home for me guys and i'm not even kidding so this is thursdays at eight i think i'll just read like a recap of the book and the characters within the book um just maybe a background story um debbie makoma actually wrote this book because she, she had a similar experience she met this wonderful ladies at a certain period in her life and they would meet every thursdays at 8 a.m for breakfast so she decided to write the book but obviously with a twist in terms of like she changed the characters and she st she changed the stories behind the characters however very authentic very relatable very human if that makes sense she displays or portrays women or friendships in such an honest way so yeah so this is what it says um, Thursdays, 8 a.m., Mocha Moments, Cafe Breakfast Club. Oh, I just remembered. Actually, they wrote this book. I think they met at like a therapy session or something. But yeah, anyway. So this was appear in the calendars of four women. Four very different women. Every week, they'd meet for breakfast and to talk, to share the truths they've discovered about their lives, to tell their stories, recount their sorrows and their joys to offer each other encouragement and unstinting support. So here are the stories behind the characters. So you have four women, four women. the first woman is Claire. So Claire has just been through a devastating and unexpected divorce. She's driven by anger and revenge until she learns something about her ex-husband that forces her to question her own actions. Forces her to look deep inside for the forgiveness and compassion she's rejected and for the person she used to be. Elizabeth. She's widowed and in her late 50s, a successful professional, a woman who's determined not to waste another second in her life. And if that life should include romantic possibilities, well, why not? <laughs> the third character is Karen. So I loved Karen because I kind of feel like this was me. But Karen is in her 20s and she believed those should be the years for taking risks, testing your dreams. So her dream is to be an actor. So what if her parents think she should be more like her sister? The very respectable Victoria. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> it's very dramatic when it comes to her family. Um, and her situation with her sister but very beautiful like the endings are beautiful so julia she's turning 40 this year her husband's career is established her kids are finally in their teens and she just started her own business everything's going according to schedule until she gets pregnant <laughs> that's not in the plan and elizabeth is a planner and everything the business she actually started is a yarn shop and the interesting thing between these two books is they both have stories of yarn and knitting in between i think debbie probably enjoys knitting or something because this whole book is about knitting this one a good yarn and then this has a character um elizabeth actually in the book has a yarn shop and she has yarn classes i think she did have yarn classes did she with the character oh no 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 she didn't have yarn classes but obviously her friends at some point helped her with her business because she got pregnant at 40 and she has a family and all those um things right and then debbie makoma a good yarn guys this is centered around the this particular shop and if you can see but there's a drawing or a painting of a shop um I don't know if I'm even explaining this visually. I think I'll just read like a recap of the same. Whether this is a return visit or you're very fast, you'll find that a good yarn is a place of welcome and warmth, a place where women feel at home, where they are among friends 
old and new. The first person you'll meet is Lydia Hoffman, who owns the shop. In the year since it opened, a good yarn has thrived, and so has Lydia. A lot of that is due to Brad Goetz. But when Brad's ex-wife reappears, Lydia is suddenly afraid to trust her newfound happiness. Alice Beaumont, Beaumont, a retired librarian, joins one of Lydia's popular knitting classes. Since losing her life savings, Alice has been living with her daughter Aurora, the only positive legacy from her brief marriage to a professional gambler, Marvin Maverick Beaumont. Now she learned that her one-time husband plans to visit and that Aurora wants a relationship with her father, regardless of how Alice feels about him. That, guys, <laughs> I wouldn't even comment. Bethan or Bethan, Bethan, Bethan Hamlin, like Alice, is facing the fallout from a divorce, but her husband Grant left her for another woman, not a pack of cards, and she's still struggling to reshape her life. She joins the knitting class at her children's urging. It's a first step in the in her effort to recover a sense of dignity and hope, then she starts a small business and meets a man with whom she has something surprising in common. Ah, oh, gosh! I don't even think I read this when I started, like when I began the book, so it's very interesting for me to read them now. So Courtney Pulansky is a depressed and overweight teenager. She's staying with her grandmother who's trying to help her. Help that takes the form of dragging her into seniors swimming sessions and to the knitting class at a good yarn. Like so many women, this four find companionship and comfort in each other and in this age-old craft. Who would have thought that knitting socks could change your life? This book actually changed my life, guys. I'm still not sure whether I'll get a December read because I have, I have a book I'm actually reading by my bedside and I don't know if, if I stretch if, I, if I'll reach it ah! so I don't know about talking about books that I haven't finished reading I think I'll finish it and if I do want to review it then I'll review it but um, this is the book I'm reading now yeah I, I, it's, 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 it's kind of what I wanted to read in December but it's very it's very intense like it has a lot i need to concentrate a lot it's what i gained from it okay now on to the last book that i talked about oh my goodness guys um i loved this book so i read this book um at a library hence why i don't have the physical copy um, but I think that's also a really good idea for those of you who maybe are not able to get copies, um, maybe because you're on a budget like myself, or because of one reason or another. Um, so going into libraries that you have access to, and then especially if you know you're going to be at the library for an extended period of time, then you can decide to pick a particular book and read it whenever you're trying to get breaks or whenever you're trying to or after you finish whatever it is you're, you're doing, right? So, um, yeah, so this book is called Can We Talk and Other Stories. Oh, guys, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, how much can relate to it right now? But it's called Can We Talk and Other Stories. It's an African writer's series book. And Shima Chinodi is the one who wrote this particular short story. And guys, let me tell you, I let me just show you the cover. So this is the cover. And if you can quite see that. Can you see that? I'm not sure. Um, so the name of this particular book, can we talk? I think, so I snapped two, two pages, just an introduction of the husband talking and an introduction of the wife. Um, so the setting of this particular story, if I do remember well, was in the southern parts of Africa. I don't specify a certain country because I can't quite remember whether it was Zimbabwe or South Africa. But a southern part of, of Africa it was written in the 80s. Remember the 80s, like the, the hype of the 80s, right? Very hip, very um, fun and all those things, right? So this book has a lot when it comes to like love 
and the concept of faithfulness and the concept of love in the 80s basically right so um and it's very raw real authentic like i feel like someone can definitely um relate so let me just give a brief description this particular book it's called can we talk so they're having conversations but in their head so i towards like the book is just an insinuation of how like as partners um in a husband and wife relationship for this book or in like friendships and relationships you really need to talk you know something i need to learn <laughs> but um so this is a, the husband's um bit says i hate the way you love medicines the way you stuff yourself with painkillers lozenges cough syrups antibiotics lemon sodium bicarbonate mouthwash and honey just for a common cold the way for you every sneeze is an allergy every itch an infection every pimple a cancer and every twitch a stroke <laughs> Your incredible faith in doctors, sorry, no, specialists, the way you let them fill you, pamper you, catch you up like a guinea pig, punch you with their metal pricks while gloating over you and saying, yes, you said so yourself, you look like raw beef. The way they suck up your blood with their insertable little tubes and smack as they sign the claim forms for some futile umpteenth test. God bless the Public Service Medical Aid Society. But I know you think my grudge with the medical profession is academic. Perhaps it is. But I just happen to trust my instincts and know that your back has nothing to do with the fish you ate yesterday. What on earth does Salmonella have to do with the good old Sunday afternoon exhaustion? I thought you had done A-level biology. I hate the way you love to be ill. The way you caught illness and gargle and cough and spit into the sink until you're really sick. The way you unashamedly declare yourself unwell to all and sundry and have your parents trundling over in their old Mazda to see you when you've scratched a knee. And I'm not there when they come. So Getty, our son, tells them I came home late last night again. I hate the way you won't let me sink my hands into your hair or smother your face with your dreads and tie your head up in a doik or an old sock and wear a nightdress in bed. So the wife responds. Okay, the words are so tiny. So she says, and I hate the way you never scrub your back and splash the bathroom floor and the walls when you take a bath. The way you leave hair all over the sink. The way you sit for hours in the toilet blasting away like a motorbike for all the visitors to hear. And then step out in front of me and elbow me out of your way. Turning the mirror in my face as if you need to see your face when wiping yourself up. Littering the floor with twisted bits of tissue paper that the baby might pick up. I hate your, bubby, your baggy khakis and their misplaced creases, your unbuttoned shirts, your don't touch turn ups, knotted ties and wrinkled jackets, and your obstinate mix and match style that makes you so boyish. I hate your outdated afro and the way you comb your hair so it sticks out like a cat's whiskers and your shabby beard that needs a good cut. I hate the way you chew your fingernails right down to the skin and then claw me in bed. I hate the way you, you, you always savage your own body, tearing your gums with your toothbrush and ripping out your hair in a comfortable haste. I hate the way you hate my relatives, the way you say you don't want them in your pockets and you don't want them to understand you so you confuse them with the unpredictability. The way you do something nice and then when they warm up to you, you suddenly back off. I just hate the way you conveniently choose to forget some of their names. The way you choose to hear what you want to hear when I talk about them. And when I remind you of something, you look up and fade with feigned surprise. I hate the way you dislike visiting my parents, even if it's only for a bag of potatoes I have to collect. And yet, you know it is you who's going to devour them. So that's just part of it. It actually does continue. But... I just took pictures of two pages that's the introduction of the husband in this particular read and the introduction of the wife the particular read as well interesting conversations so surreal so hilarious um so loving in a certain way 
and one of my favorite books i actually read it in 2019 i thought i read it in january so that remains my favorite book of 2019 and these two remain my favorite books of 2020 so if you did enjoy this particular session please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of it if you're reading a particular book as well with um that's from a rare author please let me know in the comment section down below i'd like to check them out those are the kind of books i'd enjoy reading right mm -hmm. and yeah if you know if you probably are an occasional reader like myself or an avid reader or if you do not read at all let me know let's engage each other in the comment section down below for me i think i experienced all emotions in the part in this particular books um they become as books that i read in, August, in october and, and november as well as can we talk gosh guys ah, these are books so close to my heart the african writer series and the book by um debbie makoma um yeah so i enjoy books that have very rich and like rich characters engaging stories and i am glad i found them in this books i leave the name of the pages the page where i found this books very affordable very good very uh, like the ranges of books are amazing uh, do not forget to um, subscribe like comment share do all those amazing things that help my channel and leave your recommendations of the books you're reading actually in the comment section below and i hope i'll see you in the next video see you and take care of yourself stay in the lord